Hello and welcome to my channel, On the Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's been on the hook. We have five magazines to give away today. I'm excited. I have them here stacked on my desk and we'll do that in a little while. But first of all, I wanted to welcome you to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Please like this video. That would help quite a bit. And also, um, join the community. We have... Um, free patterns that go out every so often. It's free to join the community and you get first notice and substantial discount offer code for new patterns that come out on my Etsy shop. So be sure to join the community if you haven't already. And when you do, you get a free pattern on the spot. It's a PDF that's sent directly to you that you can use. It's called the Hug Me Cow. And later in the summer, I might be sending out a different one. I don't know. It just depends. But right now, you get the Hug Me Cow. And I made that out of Huga yarn by Red Heart, I believe it is. And you can also make it out of a um, any kind of size 6 or 7 yarn. It looks really, really good with that. Maybe a Karen Latte cake. Um, I know some people had made the Hug Me Cow out of all kinds of different yarns. So uh, enjoy that new pattern. If you're signing up for the community, you get it free from me as my gift to you. So welcome to the community. This video is a late week video, and I don't know if that I'll be calling that a late week video from now on, but this is not my regular Monday video. Monday videos are kind of wild. They're all over the place. I have all the projects that I'm talking about um, one after the other, uh, lots of sweaters and scarves, things like that I have on the hook. And that's what this video channel is about, is being on the hook. But I wanted to do something different in the late week, maybe in my second video every week. It's just something a little bit different. So today, I'm going to review um, three different yarns and one has nothing to do with the others, but I do have a comparison review that I want to do, and I talked about this last week, that I wanted to do a comparison between Moroccan Nights and King Cole Shine, which is a very comparable yarn, and I bought both, and I wanted to show you the difference between the two. I made a substantial swatch, or beginning of an article of clothing, actually, out of all three, but I... Um, well, let's get to that here in just a minute. All right, let's talk about Moroccan Nights. This is a, um, it's, it's about a year old. This is a year old <laughs> yarn from Lion Brand, and this is what it looks like on the label. It's called Moroccan Nights. This is a very beautiful yarn. Now, I knew it would be. I saw it online, and my computer is very spot on with color and with um, the look of yarn, I rarely ever am disappointed when I receive the yarn in the mail. So I just wanted to order one um, shade. I think I ordered two, but only one came. I don't know if the other one is on its way, but I wanted to go ahead and do this review. This color is the color Sultan. Again, this is what it looks like. I mean, to me, that's just gorgeous. I really like it. I like it quite a bit. It's very subtle. It's um, a subtle combination of colors. There is a, um, a gold and then there's also a purple. So that's like yellow and purple together to me. That is a very good combination of colors. This uh, also has gray and the whole idea behind Moroccan Nights is kind of a... Uh, Morocco is, it just seems very... Um, exciting, very mysterious, that kind of thing. Uh, that's what comes to mind to me from Morocco. I guess from the movies I've seen and, you know, just what I know about it, it's a, kind of a neat place to be. Well, Moroccan Nights is a perfect name for this because the colors are gorgeous and the bling or the, you know, I don't know if they call it Stellina or not. Let's see. They're calling this, all right, this is a couple of stats about this yarn. It's 273 yards on the ball. It's a size three. It is not a four weight uh, yarn. It's a three. And I like to work with threes. I, th I think they're nice. They're really nice. They give such a nice drape to your fabric. This is 98% acrylic and 20, 
I mean, excuse me, 98% acrylic and 2% polyester. And the 2% polyester, I'm guessing, is the bling that's in there. Now I'm going to put this up close so you can see it, but the bling is the same color as the yarn. Uh, the bling is almost like a purple color, so you can almost not see it. And if you weren't looking for it, you might not even notice it. But if I can get it up close enough where you can, maybe it would focus on that for me. Um, let's see. Let's get it up there. I don't know if you can see that. The bling is so subtle in there, you can barely see it. It's there, and it looks much better in person than it does on camera. But take my word for it, it is gorgeous. The bling is about every quarter or, yeah, right about every quarter of an inch. It wraps around, so there's quite a bit of it. It's not just here and there. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, I know some people don't like this, but I certainly do. I think it's gorgeous. Now, what I did was I made a beginning of a top-down sweater that I've been working on, and I posted this on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, which I invite you to do, um, I usually put, uh, during the week, I will take photos of what I'm working on, and I'll post it on my Instagram page, and you can look and see the progress of my projects during the week. You know, I don't, you don't have to just watch me on YouTube, but I invite you to, to follow me on Instagram so you can see these. This is the beginning of a top-down, here, let me turn it this way, a top-down little sweater for me, and I really liked it. I liked it until I got here. Let me show you where, and y'all who are on Instagram will know where I'm going with this. Um, see that right there? See the, the whole thing? All right, so it's twisted. This is a problem when I'm distracted. I was probably on the phone or watching a YouTube video or something, and I was just crocheting away. And look how far I got. I was only about, I was about four rows around, which is quite a bit of crochet. And this is what happened. I twisted it while I was crocheting it, and this is how it turned out. <laughs> One side is twisted, so I will have to frog out this entire thing. I might be able to leave a little bit of that first row, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> I get so tickled when I'm distracted. I do some crazy things with my crocheting. So I, I wanted to show you that to you. Big mistake Jeannie made, but that's okay. You can see the beauty of this yarn. Look how gorgeous this is. And it's so subtle. The changes in color are very, very subtle. Now that is a little stripey right there, but if you'll notice as you go around the corner, it's it takes a while for it to change. And then it changes into this new color, yellowish color right in there. I think it's gorgeous. I'm going to finish the top. I will have to, I'll, of course, I'm gonna frog it out, but I will finish this top. I really like it. And it's just gonna be a summer top. It's not going to be a warm sweater. It's just going to be a spring or summer sweater. I might put this in timeout just for a little while and continue making it later, but I wanted to show it to you because I enjoyed working with this Morocco Nights yarn. Now, one thing I did not like about it, um, my, my mistake was the twisty thing. That was my mistake. But you will find if you pull this yarn from the inside and it came right out, so I was able to work with it that way. If you pull it from the inside, it twists like crazy. And it was just twisting, twisting, twisting. What I had to do was hold the yarn like this and let the ball turn on its own to, to get the twists out of the yarn. Now there's one right there, you can see it. It's not bad, but some of it, see how it does it? it well, it's because I just twisted it. But if you don't keep it untwisted, this is what you end up with. Look at that. Now, it's not like you can't pull it and use it. I used it. It wasn't a problem. But because I'm pulling from the inside of the ball, then it's going to be twisted. I believe if you pulled from the outside of the ball, it wouldn't be as bad. But I don't know that. I did not pull it from the outside. I only pulled it from the inside of the ball. And I felt like I was really doing something great <laughs> when I pulled it from the inside. Because that's how I like to use skeins of yarn. Because it keeps them from flipping all over the place. 
However, because it was inside, it was very kinky when I pulled it out. The yarn was bent every inch or so, I mean, in a different direction. So I thought, well, I'm going to be in trouble here. But once I let it un unwind itself, it, it worked out just fine. Now, I wouldn't want to make a whole lot of articles from this because of that. That is the one thing I don't like. I love the color. I love the bling. It's got a tiny bit of a halo on it, so it's really kind of nice. It's not um, so bad. I, I certainly wouldn't call it a bad yarn, but I would, I would probably give it about an 8 on a 10 because of the twisting. That's the only thing I didn't like about this yarn. Other than that, it was quite beautiful. Now, I'm comparing that to the King Cole Shine, which is this yarn. I showed this to you last week. King Cole Shine is 97% acrylic and 3% polyester. It's premium acrylic. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. This is just acrylic, this Moroccan Nights. This is a premium acrylic. Now, if that makes a difference, I don't know. It, it, perf it may make a difference, I don't know. But this is the color Rhapsody. This is a, a turquoise and purple with a little bit of kind of a yellow greenish, almost a chartreuse in there. And it is quite beautiful. It, it's a beautiful yarn. King Cole Shine. And you can get this from Lovecrafts. I think that's where I purchased this. And there are probably six or eight colors. Now, this is a pretty one. This is called Rhapsody. And this is what it looks like crocheted up. Now what I've done is the same thing I did with the Moroccan Nights. I started a top-down sweater. This is a little garish for me. That's a little too stripy for me. But it has a beautiful bling to it. Now I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it has a lot of bling in it. But the bling is a in this particular yarn, in this particular color Rhapsody, the bling is purple. It's purple all the way through, so it's not yelling at you. It's not silver, and I don't like this yarn because it's so stripy. I might continue making this only because it's just loud, and I like loud things, not all the time, but I do like loud things. I might make a tank top out of this or something. I don't know if I want to put a lot of yarn into something that is this loud. This might be prettier under a cardigan or under a... A black jacket, something like that. This is really, really pretty, and that would be the reason I would continue making this. So what I'll probably do is make this top down, continue on to the body, maybe make it even a crop, and then just put a little edging around the sleeve area, and then that'll be done with that. I don't think I'm going to pursue it, but I do like it, and the bling, again, is the color of the yarn, so it's not yelling at you. This is the other color of King Cole that I bought. This is called, the, the shade is Poppies, and it's a red and gray, mostly red and gray. There's not a whole lot of other color in there. It's pinkish, kind of red, purplish. I mean, it gets into those colors, and then a gray, um, kind of a pinky gray, actually. So it's shades of red and pink, in this particular yarn and if you look at this you can see it the bling is silver and it's it really stands out on this color poppies unlike Rhapsody which has the bling in purple and you can kind of see it how it's wrapped around the yarn there but on this one it's silver and so it's it's going to yell at you a little bit <laughs> I fed that out I did a the beginning of a sweater I thought I was going to do, and then I think, I think I'm going to frog this out too, but I wanted to show this to you. It is quite beautiful. This is the Poppy's color in the King Cole, and done in a shell pattern, which I dearly love. I love the shell pattern, and crochet is so beautiful. But I started out right here, if you can see this, on one end, I started out too small for my width around my side to side measurement. If you know what I mean, if you buy my patterns, you know what that is. It's a side to side measurement from the side seam to the side seam. I thought I had it right and it was really too small. And so I was crocheting along, of course distracted, and I lost some stitches in here somewhere. And then I just kept going because I wanted to just make a a swatch and this is a really big swatch here but I just wanted to show you what this looked like 
and you can see the bling in there. There's a lot of bling in this color. So the color of the bling makes all the difference if you can see it. The least you can see in here in Moroccan Nights. That's the that's a very low key bling. This is uh, kind of a low because it has the color of the bling of the yarn. And this one is very loud because it's a silver bling and it stands out. You can see it very easily in that yarn. So that's my review of those. Now, they all crochet up just fine, but this again is a twisty yarn. And if they would fix that, that'd be great. But I don't know why it twists so much like that unless because I'm pulling it out of the middle of the ball of yarn. But this is actually off the top of the yarn. <laughs> so I might it might not help me if I'm pulling my yarn from the outside. So when I said that, I probably was wrong about that. So anyway, that's my review of those three yarns. Uh, they're all comparable price. They're all about the same price, five or six ninety nine for you know a substantial number of yards on each one. The Sultan Moroccan Nights has 273 and these um, King Cole Shines 310 yards and they're all size 3. So I thought that'd be a nice uh, comparison of the yarns together. Um, the Moroccan Nights is much more subtle than the other two. So if you're into wild bling buy some Poppies King Cole and you'll love it. It's just covered up with bling. <laughs> it has a lot of bling on it. Now, I wanted to do another yarn review. I know I said I was going to do a book review today. Um, the book I'm going to review is Romantic Crochet, and it's a beautiful, beautiful book. I'm looking at it over there in my box of things to talk about, and I decided to wait maybe till Monday. I might do that on Monday, or maybe even a separate video about that because it's a beautiful book and I made a, a little something in the book and it's not very big or anything, but I always try to do that when I buy a crochet book. I'll make a swatch of something in there or a, or a small article like I did uh, Jessica Carey's book. I made the basket in there and it turned out great. I'm so glad that I did that. So I'm, I'm going to talk about that in another video. This video I wanted to do another yarn review and I saw this on Lion Brand, and I believe that it was four for ten dollars, but I can't swear to it. I can't remember if that's why I bought it or if I just saw it and I liked it. But it might have been four for ten. Now that I think about it, but it's called Summer Kiss. This is the band on it, Summer Kiss. It's already been reviewed by probably every YouTuber, but I bought it because there were probably 10 or 12 colors. They were loud. They were like kids colors and that's what it's designed for. Kids, uh, they talk about it being good for kids wear, um, I guess because you can wash it and you can dry it as well. Now I will say on one review, a lady said that she washed it and dried it and it didn't turn out all that great. And I, on handmade things, I rarely put them in the dryer. I just can't even imagine doing that, unless it's a blanket or something. If it's a garment, I would not put it in the dryer. But because that affects the fit, you know, if it, sh it shrinks up, you don't want that. But this is a really pretty yarn. It's called Summer Kiss, again, and it's a colored yarn with um, probably about an inch or an inch and a half of several colors along the yarn itself and my yarn was is called Earl Grey it's the gray color and this is the most subtle color that they had so I bought four balls of this so my guess is that it was on the four for ten <laughs> lime brand just because I wanted to try it and it's enough for a small sweater or short sleeve sweater so I thought I need to I need to try that and it's a chain yarn it's almost flat actually it's not a spun yarn it's a more of a chain and then every so often there's this little colored piece here with several colors in it and then it goes back and mine was about every yard about every yard there was that color little inch of color and I thought that was kind of pretty so I made a swatch and I'm making a, 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 a top so I made it my side-to-side -side measurement 
And then I went up on one side just to show you a swatch. I, I didn't want to do long lines of everything until I'm ready to make the, the top. But here it is in uh, double crochet. And you can see little splotches of color there and there and there. And that's how it looks crocheted. Knitted, it might look totally different. I don't have a knitted swatch, but the crocheted looks like that. I wanted to show you that. I like it. Again, though, this is the only color that I would have. Uh, the other colors were too bright for me. I don't like really bright, bright colors. But I ordered four balls of this, four hanks of this Summer Kiss, and I'm very pleased that I did. I like it, and I'll tell you why. One reason is it's very, very soft. It's very, very smooth. There's no halo at all. The stitch definition is very nice. See all the stitch definition in there. You can see every single stitch. Now, I might make this with a half double crochet or extended single or something like that. Um, but I just wanted to do this so you could see the stitch definition in there. I really like that. I have a lot of yarn here, four balls of this yarn. There are 262 yards on the ball, so I have about a thousand yards or somewhere in there of this and plenty to make a summer top. This is a size four yarn and the recommended hook is I, and that was the one that I used to make the swatch. It's 100 grams, of course, and 262 yards. So it's 80% cotton, and it feels like cotton. It's so very, very soft. I really like how soft this is. Let me get that back up there for you. This is 80% cotton and 20% polyester machine washable and dryable. Again, one of the ladies didn't like the way it dried, and I could understand that. But it could be that her dryer was too hot. Um, it, it shrank up quite a bit. And also it had little tiny white dots on her stitches. And she showed her stitches and there was a little white dot here and there where the, the yarn that they use to make this colored piece in here apparently runs through the whole length of the yarn. So I'm not really sure how that happened. I, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. I didn't wash and dry my swatch. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. If it says machine washable and dryable, I'll hand wash and lay it flat to dry. That's just me. If I put in all those hours of work on something, I'm not going to uh, risk it by putting it in the dryer. Now, if it's something for a child, I guess I would. But for me, there's no way I would do that especially if I was very pleased with how it turned out, which I think I'm going to be. So again, that is the Summer Kiss by Lion Brand. Really like it. I really like it. Like I said, though, there's only one color that I would have, and that was the gray. So there are my two reviews on the two types of um, yarn, the bling yarn and the color, little spits of color in that uh, Summer Kiss yarn. I kind of like that. It's different. It's not stripey, it's all one color except for those little splotches. So I think I'm going to really like that. Now, let's move on to our giveaway. Our giveaway is for four crochet magazines and one cross stitch. And I saw that a lot of people signed up for it. I, I'm excited, I'm excited that y'all cared enough to sign up for the giveaways. So I think it's fun. I love crochet magazines, as you know. So I'm going to give these away, and what we'll do is we'll turn the camera to the computer. And for every magazine, we had a keyword, and I wrote it on the back. And with the keyword, you could place in your comment, and then you'd be in the running for that giveaway. Then we're going to start over and do a different giveaway with a different word. So let me move some of this yarn out of the way and we'll get started. Here we are with the camera pointed to the computer. This is the magazine we're giving away first. This is the Interweave Crochet Forest Frolics and the key word on this particular magazine was CENTER. C-E-N-T-E-R. So I've typed that in already here and let's find out how many comments were in the running for that. So, 251 of y'all use that word in your comments so that you could 
uh, be in the running for this magazine. So let's go over here and find out who wins the Interweave magazine. Wow, look at all those people. Karen Allen. Karen Allen. There's your word, center there. So Karen Allen, congratulations. You're the winner of the first magazine. Here we are for magazine number two, and this is the Interweave Crochet Warm Up with Bulky Yarn magazine. It's really nice. I like this one. There were lots of really cool um, patterns in here for bulky yarn. I know some of y'all uh, enjoy working with that. I do too. I haven't done a whole lot of that, but I do enjoy it. This is the Winter 2021 issue of Interweave Crochet. So I'm going to set that aside, and we can go right here. I've typed the word bulky right there, and let's find out how many people were in the running for this particular magazine. And some of y'all did not put all the words in your comments, which is great. If you weren't interested, that's, that's awesome. Give somebody else a chance. All right, there are 283 pe people who signed up for this particular magazine. So let's, let's go over here and find out who wins this magazine. This would be Kimberly Needham. Kimberly Needham, you have won the bulky. That's the only one she wanted, too. Look. <laughs> That's pretty good. Kimberly Needham, you have won the Interweave Crochet magazine. Congratulations. For our third magazine, this is the Crochet magazine for spring of 2021. And this had the girl with the pretty flower top on the front and there are some really pretty patterns in this particular magazine so this is the spring crochet magazine defining crochet it says so let's look let's see here i already put the word spring right there so let's find out how many people signed up for that there are a lot of people 280 people put the word spring in their comment. So let's go over here and find out who wins this magazine. And that would be Valerie Magruder. Valerie, she put all, those, all of the names in there, which is fine, but Valerie Magruder, congratulations, you've won a crochet magazine. All right, here we are again. This is for the winner of the Crochet World magazine. This is the Scrappy Projects magazine. Lots of neat patterns in here. One of my favorites, this is the Crochet World magazine for February of 2021. So let's find out how many people signed up for it. I've already put the um, keyword in there, which is the word crochet. So let's find out how many people signed up for it. And that would be 305 people. So 305 people are in the running for this magazine. So let's find out who our winner is. Get it right there. Wins the Crochet World Magazine. And that would be Cynthia Navin. Cynthia Navin. And she has the word crochet right there. So I always check these to be sure that they have the keyword in the comment, but the comment picker rarely ever makes a mistake. So, Cynthia Navin, you are the winner of the Crochet World magazine. And last but not least, the Cross Stitch magazine. This is the Just Cross Stitch magazine that I received and I'm giving it away. It's the winter... Sorry, I'm just moving these around like crazy. February 2021. This is the February 2021 Cross Stitch Magazine, and I asked you to put the word Cross Stitch in your comment, and there it is. I've typed it in, and let's go down here and see how many people signed up for the Cross Stitch Magazine. So, 123, right. Not as many people, but this is a crochet channel. So, uh, I have a Cross Stitch Magazine, though, so let's find out who wins the cross stitch magazine so let's go right there and see who wins and Christine Wilson you are the winner of the cross stitch magazine so awesome let's see if she's got the word in her comment let's see uh, cross stitch right there C R O S S S T I T C H. so 
Christine Wilson, you are the winner of the Cross Stitch Magazine. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you for participating. I appreciate each and every one of you. Well, congratulations to everyone who won their magazines. Thank you all for participating. I so appreciate all of my subscribers that show up and watch my videos, like my videos, share my videos. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you, each one. Now, I had a couple of people ask me in emails, um, about the kit that I showed for Mary Maxim. It's on the back of the Interweave Crochet Magazine, and I talked about this last week uh, in my late week video. And this is the beautiful afghan that I was looking at. It's a 46 by 46 throw. It's really not an afghan. I don't want to get started on anything that big, but I did decide to go ahead and buy it. And when I went to the Mary Maxim site and looked at it, I decided on this color. This is the called the, the sandalwood, af, uh, the sandalwood throw, and it's a, it's actually called the Persian tiles throw. The Persian tiles throw, and this is the sandalwood colorway. And oh, it's just so absolutely gorgeous. Let me get it up there so you can see it. It's just beautiful. Now I'm not a big pinky person, but that's got a little bit of red in it too. And there, there is one that's more red. It's a blue and red, but I don't have any blue in my house much. So I didn't really think that would be a good color. And all blue would not be a good color for me either. So this looks like more of the color waves that I have in my house. I have yellow walls. So there's yellow in there that would go with that. So I was just real excited when I saw it. <clears throat> I went out to the Mary Maxim site and I found the kit. It was $80 and that was just too rich for me. So I, I poked around a little bit more and found out that there was a 20% sale with an offer code. So I typed in the offer code and the kit ended up being $53.99. I thought, you know, that's doable. I spend more than that on a sweater sometimes. And then I have to make the sweater, which is, you know, the way this would be too. But I had a offer code and somehow I got the price down pretty low. And then I had... $15 postage because it's probably a very heavy kit. That would be my guess. $15 is, you know, a little steep. It's not terrible, though, because I've spent $15 sending a giveaway to somebody not too long ago, and they lived a ways away from me. They were living, like, maybe four or five states away. So the postage was $15 or $16, $17, something like that. So I don't consider that a bad amount for postage. So I bought the kit and the kit was ended up to be $73 total with everything. I had to pay tax. I had to pay all kinds of stuff on there. So I've decided to go ahead and start that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to work on the, the little motifs. There are only two different kinds. So I'm going to try to work on the motifs once a day. I'm just going to keep them on my desk and I'm not going to have my hair on fire or anything. <laughs> to finish it but I would like to make it during the year this year now I don't know how far I'll get but I would like to try that that's sort of a project that I'd like to do and if I were on Ravelry I might join up with a, a nice girl named Ellie with Craft House Magic her YouTube channel is so pleasant to watch I love to watch her she laughs a lot and she's very very pleasant and she only talks about crafting. She talks about knitting and crocheting, cross stitching and sewing. She's just all over the place and has a lot of great projects. And I've talked about her before and I'll put a link to her site down in the description box. But she has a um, crochet along or a make along that she's getting ready to start. And it's for any craft, which includes me. And it's for, uh, it says craft 20 a day. And that means she, you would work on a certain project 20 minutes a day till you finish it because she had a cross stitch project that she worked on most of the year last year and she worked on it for 20 minutes every morning when she got up and was having her coffee she worked on it for 20 minutes and she finished it on every show she showed her progress and that she had been working 20 minutes every morning um, on this particular project then she would put it down and go and do other things so I thought that might be Something fun that I could do. If I spent that much money on a throw, I would like to at least get it done. And I know that I can do it. It's only 46 inches wide, so it's not huge. It's a little over a yard, yard and a third, I guess. So 
I just thought that I could do that. I should, I should be able to do that. So I went ahead and ordered the kit and I'll show it to you as soon as it gets here and we'll look at the colors and it's an intermediate pattern. So uh, it won't be just, you know, whipping it out without looking at any instruction. I'm sure I'll have to, but after you make a few of those motifs, you kind of get the hang of it and you start being able to do it on your own without a lot of pattern checking. So uh, anyway, I'm a little bit excited about that. It's not something to wear. Although you drape it over yourself. So I guess, you know, technically it could be considered wearable crochet style. So we'll see. I'm not going to spend all my time on it, but I'll spend a few minutes a day on it and see what happens. Now for next week's late week video, I am giving away a Karen Latte Cake. And here it is. This is the Karen, <laughs> dropped it. This is, ah, this is the Karen Latte Cake called Rose Scented, and I really love this. I love, love, love this latte cake. This is a size five bulky, half acrylic, half nylon. It is very squishy, it's quite wonderful. There's no wool in it at all. And they're 530 yards on this. You can make quite a few things out of this. You can make, actually you can make a blanket. If you had two balls, you can make a blanket. They still sell this color. This is a very popular color called Rose Scented. So the winner for next week will receive this Karen latte cake. And if you would, in your comment, write the word Karen, C-A-R-O-N, that's easy, C-A-R-O-N, and you'll be in the running to win the rose scented Karen latte cake. So I'm cleaning out my stash and I just saw this up there and I thought I need to give that away. So I'm going to give this away to the person that comes up on the random comment picker for next late week video for next week. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a little bit more relaxed than most of my videos. I try not to get too wired up. Uh, by the end of the week, I have to calm down just a little bit. On Mondays, I'm kind of fired. I'm ready to go. I'm running at 90 miles an hour on Monday morning. I've got so much going on and so I wanted my late week video to be a little bit more laid back, maybe with a review of something like I did today. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and meet up here on Monday on On The Hook Crochet and join me then to find out what's on the hook.